Well, the division of Sudan is between the north and the south. Darfur is going to be in the north regardless of what happens in the referendum. So they're not directly related. There is a problem in Sudan historically over the last 200 years, but it's become exacerbated in the last 20 years under the National Congress Party's leadership and its predecessor party in that the periphery of the country has been ignored and, and uh, resources have not been forthcoming for the development of the periphery of the country, where all the resources have gone to what's called the Arab Triangle, which goes from um, Kassala to Sanar to Port Sudan. It's a, it's a triangle basically through the Nile River Valley to the coast. And that's where all of the money, re oil resources, all of the uh, educational institutions, that's where it's all focused. And there's been an objection by the people who live in the poor outreaches of the country for a very long time that they're being neglected. And that's the cause, among many, of the South wanting to secede. Most of the resources, not just in oil but in mineral wealth, and in water, and I also think in agricultural land, are in southern Sudan. And the South is still one of the poorest, most underdeveloped areas in the world because all those resources have gone to the North. The South is going to secede one way or the other. In my view, they're going to vote for it in January. There's an overwhelming support for the secession of the South from the North. And frankly, it should never, in my view, it should never have been part of Sudan in the first place. It has far less to, uh, to, in, in common with Northern Sudan than it does with East Africa, which it, it's, 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 the South is African. It is Christian. It, it follows animism as a religion, but it's mostly Christian. And uh, there's a lot of hostility to uh, the Arabs attempting forced Islamization and forced Arabization in the South over many, many years, over more than a century now. There, there's been an attempt to do that. And there's resentment and anger. Two and a half million people were killed in the South during the North-South Civil War that lasted 22 years. It ended with a comprehensive peace agreement that was signed in 2004. I'm sorry, two, 2005 it was signed. And um, uh, uh, until the South secedes, I don't think we're going to have peace in Sudan. In terms of Darfur, that's another issue. But I think the real risk now for the stability of Sudan uh, is over the North-South Agreement. If the northern government does not hold the referendum in January, the South will vote to secede without the North, without the referendum. And the South has an, a large land army, 125,000 troops, and they are going to insist that they be allowed to vote on it. So I think, I, my sense is President Bashir has repeatedly said there's going to be a referendum, and if they vote to secede, then they secede. I think President Bashir is probably going to go ahead and have that referendum. I might add that the ICC um, indictment, the International Criminal Court indictment of President Bashir, in my view, was, was inappropriate not because atrocities weren't committed, because they were committed by the Sudanese government with their allies, the Janjui militias uh, from the northern Rizagat, Abala Rizagat tribes. They did commit terrible atrocities in 2003 and 4. The, uh, the fact is the advocacy groups in the United States have exaggerated what's happening now. What happened in 2003 and 4 is historically, it seems to me, indisputable, but the, the, the deaths dropped off dramatically after 04. And that was not reported in the United States. And the impression you had from the news media and from the advocacy groups is that uh, the, the genocide was still continuing, which is not true. And so we were focusing on something that was not happening. It happened in the past. It is not happening now. Uh, we're, w our biggest problem, ra frankly, is the rebels are so divided in, in, in Darfur. They're divided into dozens of factions. The s largest tribe, the Ford tribe, that are in the camps have a particular leader who's been, in, who's been in Paris for four years now, and he has been in, in, uh, intransigent about having peace negotiations over Darfur. He won't meet with anybody, won't talk to anybody, and won't negotiate anything. And as a result of that, there's no peace in Darfur. I actually think the, um, we could get a peace agreement if the rebel groups would unite. There is a, a leader, a uh, four leader, whose name is uh, Ahmed Derej. I've known him for 20 years. He's an older man. He was the governor of Darfur, elected in the 1980s. He's a businessman. He, he, he doesn't live in Sudan now, but he's widely admired in Darfur. I asked people if they liked Derej, and everybody said they were, he was, he's the most respected four leader in Darfur by far. I think if they got behind him and let him lead a delegation 
of representing all of the tribes, I think they could arrange a peace agreement. But getting everybody behind him would be a difficult task at this point because there's so, there's so much infighting among the rebels. The, governor, uh, the government of Sudan, I think, wants to end the Darfur conflict. They don't know how to do it. And they can't do it unless the uh, rebels unite. 